Waikai, brackish water, where fresh water meets salt water, houses some of the most productive environments on our planet. In the Waikai, you will witness the very basis of all living things thriving. The Kumulipo, one of our creation chants, links us as Kanaka Maoli to all the universe, its elemental forces and sources of life. Kumulipo reminds us what came before we came to be, what was birthed before Kanaka, in order to bless us with vai, water to quench our thirst, ea, oxygen in order to breathe, and kai, the ocean to sustain. Long before Darwin, our chants and stories taught us that in the beginning the vai kai came forth, then the vale vale, the algae, the limu, the very building blocks of all life. Come along with us on this journey to explore vai kai, the mama's milk of our planet Earth. What's up to all my brothers and teachers keeping it real? To the keiki around the planet. You hear it? Kahale Hoaka explores with the Paniolo Prince, Akohano, and McQueen. And my, we had Kamalo in this brackish water, swamp like um, area. Right here, you get fresh water through springs trickling out and entering a what was once a Lokoia, now a mud flats with Akule Kule on the wide. But here, fresh and brackish water meet. And this episode is about the magic that happens in these kinds of environments. Fresh water, mama's milk, life, brackish. Oh, algae bloom, all different kinds of limu. Second stage of limu, second stage of fish eating life cycle. The vai kai. This is the vai kai. We're going to explore different ones throughout this episode where life happened. Aloha mai kako. In order for us to better understand this episode, let's start by practicing our ho'oleloho, our new vocabulary words for this episode. Repeat after me, ho'opili mai. Vai. Vai. Vai is fresh water. Kai. Kai. Which means the sea or salt water. Vai kai. Vai kai. That's brackish water, a combination between fresh and salt. Limu. Limu. Limu is algae, algae, seaweed. Malama. Malama. To care for something. Maika i loa. Maika i loa. Maika i means good. If you put a loa after it, it means very good. Mahalo. Mahalo. Mahalo means thank you. It means to be grateful. Ono. Ono. Delicious, and it's also to have a craving like, oh, I'm so ono for poke and poi. Ahui ho. Ahui ho. Ahui ho means goodbye. It means until we meet again. Ah, until hui meet ho again. Pua. Pua. Pua is a baby fish or a fingerling. It also means flower or a, or a child. Akua. Akua. Akua is a deity. It's a supernatural divine being. Hawaii ne. Hawaii ne. Ne is only used when you are there to say it. So you would not say Hawaii ne if you are away from Hawaii. Only if you are here, you put the ne at the end. Kanaloa. Kanaloa. Kanaloa is a kua of the deep sea and ocean voyaging. It's also another name for the ocean. Kane. Kane. Kane means man, it means male. And it also is the name of the aqua of man and fresh water and many more things which we'll learn about in this episode. Kalo. Kalo. Kalo is taro, the center of our culture, who we are. And it's the first stage. Once you pound it, it becomes pa'i'ai. You add some water and it becomes poi. Onoloa. Next word is ava. Ava. Ava is kava root and it's a ceremonial drink. Kinolau. Kinolau. Kinolau are multiple body forms of Aqua. They could take different forms in nature. Mele. Mele. Mele is a song, it's a poem, and it also means to sing. And the last word is not a Hawaiian word, it's a pidgin word, and the word is chok. Chok. 
Choke means pigeon for lots, plenty, so much that you just might choke on it. Enjoy the show. Off we ho. On the 15th of May in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked towards the sound. That's funny. Thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yelp, as if some tiny person were calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton. But who are you? Where? He looked and he looked. He saw nothing there but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I say, murmured Horton. I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So, you know what I think? Why, I think there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust. Some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. Some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow in the pool. He has no way to steer. I'll just have to save him. Because after all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Anytime you have fresh water coming out of the ground or stream, it is full of who's microorganisms called phyto and zooplankton. Algae or limu is a key building block for a healthy food chain. It flourishes in the Vaikai, brackish water environment. Akupuna said the fish ponds were gardens before they were pens. All life at the shoreline, including pua, baby fish, need fresh water, microorganisms, and algae to live, just like babies need mama's milk. I think June and Honey Girl would agree with me when I say that one of our favorite things to eat is limu, or seaweed, one of the many forms of algae. Which makes me wonder, is limu or algae a plant or an animal? Hmm, you guys know? <laughs> Aloha, this is Ilikia with If You Don't Know, Now You Mo Popo. Limu. Some algae like seaweed look a lot like plants. However, algae are neither plants nor animals. Algae are plant-like living things that make food from sunshine by photosynthesis. A singular word for algae is alga, but more than one is algae. The study of algae is called phycology or algology. Recently, it's been estimated that there are 72,500 algal species throughout the planet Earth. In Hawaii, we call algae limu. In most of Polynesia, it is known as limu. It is a vital food source in our traditional diet. The first plant on land most likely evolved from shallow freshwater algae almost 500 million years ago. Algae creates much of Earth's oxygen which humans and other animals need to live. Algae can grow in both freshwater, brackish water, and saltwater. They're different from plant land plants because they don't have roots, stems, and leaves. Earth with no algae is an earth with no living thing. Algae is a primary source of food for most fish and other aquatic life. Since all land plants evolved from algae, there wouldn't be any life or land without it. Scientists also estimate that algae produces up to 80% of Earth's oxygen. Aloha mai kako. Today we're going to be talking about the different types of bodies of brackish water, meaning areas that hold fresh and salt water. Vaikai. Ako Haruhano, what can you tell us about brackish water seas? They're the largest bodies of brackish water. And what we're looking at is the largest body of brackish water. It's the Black Sea. Black. Yes, located between Western Europe and East Asia. No, East Europe and Western Asia. Bordered by Ukraine, Russia, Romania, and Turkey, Turkey. Georgia. Turkey. Very nice. And there's a castle. It's in Crimea. And it's called the Swallow's Nest. That's the area next to the Black Sea. Beautiful. All right, now let's go on to talk about brackish water lakes. Look at that picture. That's the Caspian Sea or the Mazandaran Sea. Tell me about that. The Caspian Sea, the world's largest lake. Wow. It's an endorheic basin, meaning there's no outflow out of this body of water. I heard that the Volga River 
dumps like 80% of the water from Europe into the Caspian Sea. So that's where they get most of their fresh water from, is from the European rivers. This Caspian Sea, or the largest lake on the planet, Brackish Water Lake, is bounded by Kakistan, by Russia, by Azerbaijan, by Iran, and by Turkmenistan. Right. And I get one brother from Iran, whose name is Navid Najafi. And he said that they grew up going to the Mazandaran Sea and going there with his family to go swim in that ocean. In he that, said that's in where that. he learned how to ride horse. And he said one day, we all went back with that, go check them out. Oh, I cannot wait. And then we have an, another example, smaller example of a brackish lake. And that's right here in Hawaii. It's the largest brackish water lake. It's called Alia Manu, not Salt Lake. Mm -mm. We've, we've come to call it Salt Lake. So we're all going to say it together. Alia Manu. Alia Manu. Don't forget its name. Now, if you look at the picture, the same thing has happened in the Caspian Sea as Alia Manu where money has taken over. They filled in the lake with, to make development and military housing and golf courses. Lovely. Awe. Malama ikavai kai, ya? Malama ikavai kai. Nature is important. Protect it. Absolutely. Now we move on to the brackish tidal lagoons. We have an example in Aotearoa called Te Wai Hora. Tell me about Te Wai Hora, hano hano. Te Wai Hora, or what they call Lake Ellesmere, is in the Canterbury region of South Island, Aotearoa, mm. New Zealand. Yes. It's a tidal lagoon, and it's separated from the Pacific Ocean by a sandy spit. They call it spit or barrier. We call it on pool one. The pool one of Te Waihora is called Waitorete, Waitorete barrier. And again, that tidal lagoon is just like what we see to the right at Heia Fish Pond on Oahu. All kupas, umeikis, and puones are smaller versions of these tidal lagoons that we see here in Aotearoa at Te Waihora and around the planet. Wow, I'm learning so much. Are you guys learning choke too? My kailoa. Let's move on to the next one. We have marshes. Now, we went to marshes. We have marshes over here on this island in Kamalo, like the picture. What about marshes? Marshes is almost like a desert-like environment when on the low tide. Mm -hmm. But fresh water and salt water meet here. And it's kind of swampy. Mm -hmm. Yet teeming with micro microorganisms with tiny plants, tiny animals. And plenty algae. Nimu, my kailoa. And another example across the planet is the Ran of Kutch Salt Marsh in the Thar Desert. And it's the largest salt desert. Didn't even know that those existed, a salt desert. Did you know that existed? Just like Kamalo in a small version. <laughs> exactly. And it's in the Kutch district of Gujarat, India. Beautiful. One day we'll make it there. Now we move on to deltas. We don't have any deltas in Hawaii, except for Delta Airlines. We have lava deltas. A delta is when the land pushes sediment, whether it's sand, dirt, rocks out into the ocean and makes a new area of land and it's surrounded by the salt and fresh water where the river or the streams meet the ocean. Do you want to share anything about deltas? That this delta is in, in India. Mm -hmm. I want it for Mahalo India for the Chido and Axis deal, which we got as a gift in 1848. Yes. We love the deal. Thank yes. you, India. It's Ono. Mahalo. So this is the Ganges Brahmaputra Delta, the world's largest delta, covering most of Bangladesh and the state of West Bengal. Beautiful. So then we're going to move on to estuaries. And we have estuaries all over Hawaii, but we're going to take you to the Amazon first. The estuary, where the river meets the ocean. The Amazon, the longest river on the planet, is also the biggest estuary or river by volume that pushes fresh water into the salt. The Amazon wow. River pushes so much fresh water into the salt in this estuary environment that if you put the world's seven largest rivers after the Amazon all combined, they still wouldn't push as much fresh water into the salt as the Amazon wow. River estuary system. Wow. Boom. Amazing. 
just like Honoli Vai, but Honoli Vai is just a smaller version. So that brings us to our home, Honoli Vai, showed in the picture here. And you can hear the stream flowing right behind us, going out into the ocean. And so that is another example of a smaller estuaries. Everywhere you find a stream or a river in Hawaii flowing into the sea, it is called a N, not a N, estuary. An estuary. No matter how big or how small the river, wherever the river touched the ocean is magic. Magic. That's where the magic happens. The Vaikai. The mamas know. Mahalo for joining us. Ahui ho. Ahui ho. Malama. Malama. Since we're on the subject of Vaikai, it's only appropriate that we learn about Kane and Kanaloa. Now the Kanaka Maoli believed that we had different Akua that represented all the elemental forces in our universe. So let's talk about Kane, Kane and Kanaloa. So Kane was the Akua of fresh water and many other things, and Kanaloa was his brother, who was the protector of the deep sea. This book, Akua Hawaii, is one of my favorite books, and it was illustrated by Solomon Enos and written by Kimo Armitage. And this is what they have about Kane. Let's learn about him. Kane. Kane is the god of procreation and the ancestor of chiefs and commoners. Among the body forms of Kane are Kalo, fresh water, hmm, bai, sugar cane, tea leaf, ginger, and bamboo. Kane is frequently connected to freshwater streams, freshwater springs, fish ponds, and ava drinking. He is also known for the cultivation of plants. Breadfruit ava and the mulberry plants are sacred to Kane and Kanaloa. Kanaloa is the Hawaiian god of the ocean, sailing, and ocean voyaging. Among the body forms of Kanaloa are banana, octopus, and porpoise. So as you can see, they had different body forms. They were shapeshifters. They had kinolau, we would call them. And they would travel throughout Hawaii and bless us with fresh water. So we're going to perform for you a song now that we composed together called Let the Water Flow. And I refer to the waters of Kane. If you ask me where are the waters of Kane, I'll tell you that they flow through my body into the deep seas of Kanaloa. Enjoy the mele. Aloha. You steal the water, you rape our land Doing it every day, how can you possibly understand? Like you tearing off flesh, just leaving bone on the hand Counting money by grand Killing the planet, the plan We need to breathe and feed Our body, mind, spirit, and soul lose control Cause the way they go in is not the answer And everybody knows got a hammer why Let the water flow the optimal human being Touching, feeling, believing We reaching for the ceiling To the top of the mountain achieving Planting seedlings, truth seeking Aloha and I'm preaching, kneeling, weeping, forgiveness we should be pleading, cause I can barely hear our mama earth still breathing. Hola mai ke kai hinu hinu, hola mai ke wai kapu inu, oh mana mai de adua o tane, tane ja wai ola oya kapani. Aya hea ka wai a kane, ki palale o ale mai ku. But that's the reason we're seeking answers and teaching Gonna do what we can to stop the bleeding Coral reef bleaching, long liners sneaking GMO back to dealing Our environment is at the end of her tracks Braces screaming, reason Planetary treason Filing suit is all life and now even conscious human beings. Hola mai ke kai hinu hinu, ho 
Ola mai karai kapui nu O mana mai dea tua otani Tadi tavai o lauya kapani Aya hea kavai a kane Kipala le o ale mai ku koko Ike kai o nu o kana lo Imagine if all the rivers ran to the ocean and all the springs were bubbling with the promise of new life. We humans tend to forget that we're supposed to protect nature, our mama earth. From the largest to the littlest living and non-living things, we must be the ones to put nature back on top. We need to aloha aina, truly love and care for our environment. Now imagine a world without fresh water going into the ocean. Fresh water is the mama's milk for the first stage of life in the Vaikai, and without it, there would be no pua. A world without beautiful, bountiful Vaikai environments is like a world without the ability to birth new generations. So join us and help to protect and invest in all the generations yet to come. I see the light, courage, culture, hope, love, shining so bright. It's a delight if you ever get the sight to see the fire in our cakey spirit ignite. <laughs>